Hello everyone, I am Dimitri with Hardware Canucks. Welcome to another video. I feel like CPU tower coolers have gone a bit stagnant over the last little while as consumers and enthusiasts even have started to shift towards all-in-one radiator coolers um, over the standard air coolers because you know the whole water cooling uh, aspect of cooling your hardware definitely has its merits. So Cooler Master in my eyes is trying to challenge that type of thinking with the Master Air Maker 8 CPU cooler. They're giving this new 3D vapor chamber a try, added a few modular aspects that are pretty unique all with a price of $130. And usually this price tag is not associated with air coolers, and so this will eventually hurt the spread of the Maker 8. First, let's start with the packaging, which is way over the top in my opinion. Surely everything is organized and labeled beautifully, but this is so much packaging material. You know, you're paying $130, and a good chunk of that is for the, uh, the all the packaging that you see here. Plus there's a very bulky box, just for an extra piece, you know, I wonder what happened with being environmentally conscious company and trying to sort of sell that to us instead of drowning us in all this cardboard. So moving on, in the package we receive both AMD and Intel brackets, this plastic housing with all the needed mounting hardware, an additional aluminum top piece for the cooler, where the stock one is this glossy transparent one, and you can also download 3D printing templates for customization of your own. Moving on to the cooler itself, so first we have two 140mm Silencio fans, so good quality there, that move quite a bit of air and have uh, fantastic static pressure. They are illuminated in only red color, so your color coordination inside the case must be thought about, but check out that gorgeous top of the heatsink with lit up middle Cooler Master logo and the end tips for the eight heat pipes, so it has the number and the name as it features eight uh, heat pipes in total. So there's four heat pipes that are soldered onto the base, which is the sort of the standard profile for, uh, you know, CPU coolers, while the other four are part of the Cooler Master's new 3D VC or 3D vapor chamber design, where there, uh, there is coolant inside the base and the four heat pipes, and as the coolant heats up, it turns into gas, you know, travels through the heat pipes, get cooled by the heat sink and the fans, and then it turns back into the liquid form, uh, and the cycle continues. So the cooler base isn't totally polished, and in fact, it is actually more textured than what we normally see from most high-end CPU towers. Now the fans are mounted on brackets, so they are easily removable by pressing these clips on each side, and in fact you need to remove the fans during installation, but it's not comfortable if you need to swap the fans inside the case, because these clips are at the base and sometimes they're maybe difficult to access, especially if you have fans at the top, there's no way to pass your hand there, or perhaps you cannot remove the top panel at all. So this simple clip and slide mechanism doesn't really help here. And if for any reason you'd want to swap out the included fans, 120mm fan brackets are included, which grant you extra clearance for memory modules, and we'll get to that in just a little bit. Now, installation from my perspective with a Z170 board was pretty straightforward. You secure the back plate, it's all manual, no screwdrivers required. Then you pop in some thermal paste, which is included, lower the cooler uh, in place to match the two secure points on either side, and bam. Then you need a screwdriver to tighten these two incredibly tiny nuts, which is so weird given the massive size of the cooler itself. But luckily, uh, the heatsink is shaped to allow a screwdriver to access that spot, which worked just fine. Now, this was, of course, all done outside of the case, but I imagine the process to be a lot more tedious if performed inside a case. And you should also be mindful that the cooler is giant and heavy. It's 1.35 kilograms and 172 millimeters in height. So case clearance need to be double checked for sure. I actually didn't realize just how tall the cooler was until a good portion of it was sticking out of my system and I couldn't close the panel. And also if you move the fan position in the top slot, cooler height grows by about 12 millimeters, which means only full tower accommodation is possible. But why would you want to raise the fans here, you might say? Because unless you have some really low profile RAM, you definitely encounter clearance issues. Not only does this fan cover two memory slots, but it's practically touching uh, the middle portion of the memory. And lucky for us, this Corsair LPX modules don't have that heatsink right in the middle. 
Raising the fan to the second position would give us enough clearance for a taller RAM, but then you might have this weird looking top panel for the CPU cooler. So the last piece of installation is cable management, which is connected via this uh, single four pin connector to your motherboard, and it splits for the dual fans and the LED power. Uh, it's long enough to route to any CPU header on your motherboard, but oh man, it's not flexible at all. And it's a good thing that the heatsink is so large, it's large enough to simply hide this cable out of your sight. And this is what the default plate looks like on the top. Then there's no plate and then the aluminum plate in the end. And I personally love the aluminum finish as the plastic piece shows fingerprints way too easy. So now let's talk cooling performance and this is by far the best performing air cooler we've tested to date. The numbers speak it all and the package with this cooler seems to be full with a 3D VC, great fans and a dense heatsink. Surprisingly, the status quo does not change when we compare against popular 120 and 140 mm all-in-one coolers. It's still the best performing, but keep in mind that some of these all-in-ones are half the price. But it's when we move into the 240 and the 280 mm all-in-one radiator territory, this is when the Master Air Maker 8 starts to show some weakness. Despite being in the same price bracket, it's, uh, it doesn't cool very well, or it doesn't cool as well as most of these coolers. Noise-wise, it's in the middle. It's good to see that you have the potential for a quiet system with the Maker 8. So concluding words are simple, the Master Air Maker 8, uh, it cools well, it looks awesome, and uh, I do appreciate these, you know, customization element with the top plate that allows you to 3D print your own and really customize to what, whatever you feel like it. However, there are two things you have to be mindful of, RAM clearance and case clearance. One of them because the, the cooler is so large that you will not be able to fit it in most mid towers, especially if you're raising the fans and you most likely will have to raise the fans because RAM clearance is just, unless you're using really low profile modules, you'll not be able to fit uh, the cooler with its stock position. However, the biggest issue for many would be the price as it swims in the same territory as 240 and 280 millimeter all-in-one radiator coolers that outperform the Maker 8 easy and you can achieve similar cooling results with single all-in-one radiator coolers. So yeah. But that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I have a question for you. If you are thinking of upgrading your cooler or using a cooler in your next build, would you do air cooling or, you know, all-in-one enclosed water cooling for your next build? And if you are choosing the air cooling route, would uh, the Maker 8 be attractive for you? Leave your reasons down below. I'd love to encourage this conversation to find out how the consumers are reacting towards this type of direction from Cooler Master and creating this very advanced and high-end air cooler. But that would be it for this one. I'm Dimitri with Hardware Canucks. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Ah, you hear that? Listen. Okay, I can't do it.